Good afternoon, everyone. So today we're going to talk about uh, Chapter Three in the Pirate's Guide, Yar the Pirate's Guide to R. And in this chapter, we're going to talk about vector arithmetic and descriptive statistics, specifically how to calculate means, medians, standard deviations, and all those fun things from vectors of numbers. So so far from chapters one and uh, one and two, you should know how to create simple scalars and assign them to objects. And again, a scalar is just a, a single number or string. So I can define a, a scalar object called A and just say it's three. And if I highlight this and run it to the console, then A is saved. And if I look at the value of A, I see it's three. Um, but we also know how to create vectors. So I can create a vector B, which is a one-dimensional object. And I can do this using <clears throat> excuse me, the C command. So say B is a vector with three, one, four, one, five, nine. And if I run that, then I see B is now a vector of these six numbers. And we can also create vectors um, using other functions like the sequence function. So C can be sequence from 10 to 100. And oops, from two equals 100. And let's do that in steps of 10. So if I run this, and I see C are the numbers from 10 to 100 in steps of 10. <clears throat> but um, what we want to talk about today is how to do basic uh, arithmetic using vectors. So let's say we have uh, a vector of numbers. Actually, we can just use, uh, let's use B up here. So I'll get rid of these. And let's say we want to add 10 to all the numbers in B. Well, we can simply do that by saying b plus 10. And if I run this, you see that r has added 10 to each element in b. So uh, we can also say b, I don't know, divided by 2. And r will divide all the numbers in b by 2. So if, if you do basic operations on vectors, um, like powers, for example, let's say, oh, let's say we want to know all the powers of 2 from 2 to the 1st, 2, 2 to the 10th. Then we can do that by just saying um, 2 to the power of 1 to 10. And so the first one is 2 to the 1st, 2 to the 2nd, 2 to the 3rd, 2 to the 4th, and so on. So if you apply a single scalar to a vector in R and do some operation, R will just apply that scalar to each element in the vector. And now we can also do um, operations between vectors. So operations between vectors. And to give an example, let's say um, you just had a big sale on your pirate ship and uh, we had five pirates sell both pies and cookies. So let's say here's how many pies the five pirates sold, so three, six, two, ten, and four. And then let's say you have a vector saying how many cookies they sold. Well, let's say the first one got 70, next one got 40, next one got 40, next one got 200, next one got 60. Now let's say you wanted to know um, how many total items did each pirate sell. Well, we can do that by just saying, uh, Let's say we'll call it create a new vector called total, and that will be pies plus cookies. And what this will do is it will create a new vector of like five, and the first element should be three plus seventy, the next should be six plus forty, and so on. So let's run this. Oh, it didn't like pies. That's because I haven't run these two commands yet. And now we can see that those two vectors are in our global environment, so now R knows what cookies and pies are. Before I didn't actually run these commands, that's why it didn't work. Let's run this, and now we can see that it worked. And if I type total here, I can see that indeed the first element is the sum of the first two, the next one is the sum of the next two, and so on. So if you have two vectors that are the same length and you want to um, apply some operation between the two of them, you just apply the operation to the two vectors. So let's call this one sum total. And then I could also say, let's, I don't know why you would want to do this, but if you wanted to multiply the two, 
Um, so I could say product total, and that would be pies times cookies. And if I do this, run it, now let's look at prod total. Then the first one is 210, that should be 3 times 70. The next one is 6 times 40, and so on. Okay, so uh, that's an easy way to do operations between numerical vectors. Um, you can just apply scalars to them, or you can do operations between two vectors of the same length. Now, it's, it's important that the vectors have the same length, otherwise R will um, maybe do things you didn't expect. So let's say, for example, adding two vectors of different length. Let's say we have A, which is 1 and 2, and B is 1 to 10. So let's look at these. So A is a vector of length 2, B is 1 to 10. Now if I try to add these two together, so let's say C is A plus B, if I run that, what R is going to do is it's going to first add the first two elements, and then when it gets to the third one, because there's another third element in A, it will just repeat the sequence of A. So the third one here will be 3 plus, now it's going back to the first element of A, 4, it'll add 2 to that, so that's why you get 6. But then when you get to the fifth one, now it repeats A again. So now the uh, fifth element of the sum is 5 plus 1, and so on. So if you do try to do operations between two vectors with different lengths, R will usually, um, it'll do something, um, but you need to make sure you know how it's going to do that. Typically what it's going to do, it'll just repeat the smaller sequence, in this case A. Um, maybe an easier way to look at that, let's say A is um, uh, 0, 100, and B is now 1 to 10 again. So now if I say A uh, plus B, let's run these two, um, Oh, I did something wrong here. Ah, oh, I forgot the C here. So now A plus B, you see that for the first element, it takes 1 plus 0. and the second one, it takes what would have been 2 and B, 2 plus uh, 100. And now for the third element, it's 1, or sorry, it's 3 plus 0. And for the first one, it's 4 plus 100 and so on. So um, usually you shouldn't be doing operations between two vectors of different lengths, but sometimes... Um, uh, it can be helpful. Okay, so that's how to do operations between vectors, but what about doing descriptive statistics? So of course this is where it gets a bit more interesting, and there are many different functions in R that allow you to easily calculate uh, descriptive statistics, and you can see all of, the, or not all of them, but many of the common ones in um, the R reference card, which I'll put a link to below this, or also in the book. So, for example, we have the mean function, and as you may have expected, uh, mean just calculates the mean of a vector. So, let's say I have a vector a is, oh, let's just do, let's use pi's before. So, remember pi's is 3, 6, 2, 10, 4. What if we want to know, on average, how many pi's the pirate sold? Just say mean of pi's. Run this, and we get a value of 5. Uh, we can also do a median, so median pies is 4. Uh, we can also do a standard deviation, which is S, um, SD of x, so SD of pies, or not, uh, we've been doing enough on the pies, let's do, what was the other one, cookies, okay. So SD of cookies is 67.23. Um, we have other functions like min and max, which will give you the minimum and maximum values. So what's the minimum number of cookies that were sold? Let's run that. And we see the minimum number was 40. Let's make sure that looked right. So let's look at the vector cookies again. And sure enough, the smallest one was 40. We can get the max, so max of cookies, 200. That makes sense. Good. So I think these are the... Let's see, one, two, three, four, five most common um, descriptive statistic functions in R. Uh, but if you want to get a num all of these at once or several of these at once, you can also use the summary function. Now, this function you can apply to many different types of objects in R, but if you apply it to a vector, it will give you a bunch of statistics. So let's say summary of cookies. If I run this, 
you see that you get the minimum value, the first quartile, the medium, the mean, the third quartile, and the maximum. So summary function could be uh, a nice way to just quickly get uh, a few different statistics about a vector you're using. Um, okay, uh, one, of the, one other thing that you may want to watch out for, I think I just showed part of my calendar, hopefully there's nothing too incriminating in there. Um, one other thing you might want to uh, watch out for is NA values. So, so far the vectors we've been using have been nice because they've all contained numbers, but when you're using real data, uh, frequently there might be missing values in your data set. So, uh, a way you can usually ignore those is by using the is.na argument. And let me just show you an example. So let's have a vector called a, which has, I don't know, a few different values, but then we'll stick an na value in there. Now if I try to do mean of a, first let's run that, so now a, a is that vector. If I do mean of a, I get an na value. And that's because when R tried to calculate this mean, it saw the na, and it freaked out, and it said, okay, I can't calculate this. Um, so this, this will happen a lot in real data sets. But an easy way that you can calculate the mean and other statistics Ignoring these is just by adding the na.rm equals true environment or argument. And when you run that, you can see that uh, now uh, r has ignored this na value and it's giving us the mean of all the other values. And this na.rm argument also applies to the standard deviation function and many of the other ones. So. Um, yeah, so what I, I would say, if you're using these statistics and you find that you're getting NA values as a result, one quick way to yeah, try to fix it is by using this NA.RM argument. Um, so let's, uh, let's use what we know about calculating descriptive statistics to do an example. So let's say that um, there was a competition on your pirate ship and you had Uh, five pirates each do um, two competitions. So first they saw how many uh, how many mugs of grog they could drink. So this will be competition one. And the second one was um, how many uh, feet of rope they could climb in some period of time. And we can store these results in vectors. So let's say the grog results will be a vector. And let's say the first pirate drank 12 mugs. Next one got eight. Next one got one. Next one six. Next one two. And for climbing, let's say there was 100, 520, 430, 200, and 700. So now we know how to easily create, calculate means, for example. Let's say the mean of grog. Let me make sure I run these first. So the mean uh, number of mugs of grog they drank was 5.8. Let's look at the median uh, number of feet the pirates climbed on the ropes, so median climbing. If I run that, median value was 430. Okay, but now let's say we wanted to know uh, which pirate was the most impressive overall. Um, which pirate, yeah, was both good at uh, drinking grog and climbing. Well, what we could do is, for example, say the sum, and say that the sum is grog plus climbing. And if we do that, I shouldn't call that sum, I'll say um, competition sum. And now if we look at the value of competition sum, we see 112, 528, 431, so that should be, yeah, 12 plus 100, 8 plus 528, uh, and by this we would say, okay, well, the, the last pirate has the highest value of 702, so that was the yeah, best overall. But the problem here is that the scale for climbing is much, much larger than the scale for grog. So we're pretty much, because these values in grog are so low, it almost doesn't matter what they did here. All that really matters is how much they climbed. So how can we fix that? Well, one way we can fix that is by rescaling the variables spelled scaling wrong, um, using a z-score. And a z-score is just a way to uh, remove scaling um, 
from variables. So uh, let me just show you how that works. So the, um, the way to calculate it is you subtract the mean from a variable, then divide by the standard deviation. And this will make it such that every variable will then have a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. So let's create grog.z, and this will be the standardized version of our original vector uh, grog. So first we need to subtract the mean, so we say grog minus mean grog. And then we need to put parentheses around this and divide that by standard deviation of grog. So again, uh, we're taking the original vector, subtracting from all elements in that vector the mean, the, the mean of the vector, and then we're taking all those and dividing by the standard deviation. When I run this, let's take a grog.z. Now we see that uh, the, the values have changed the scale. So now what was originally grog of 12, so the first value in grog was 12, now it's 1.38, and the last value is negative 0.84. Now if I look at the mean of grog.z, it should be 0, which looks like it's not, but really it is. Um, so it's 4.16 times 10 to the negative 17th. Trust me, that's just about 0. And if I look at the standard deviation, then it's 1. And we can do the same thing for climbing. So climbing.z is climbing minus mean of climbing divided by SD of climbing. I run this, then here's the z-scores on the climbing variable. So now that both of these variables are on the same scale, so the mean of each is zero, uh, zero the standard deviation is one, now we can create a competition dot z, uh, which is the sum, or sorry, which is grog dot z plus climbing dot z. We do this, we get competition.z, and this is the sum of the z-scores for each person. So, and actually, you know what we should do? We should probably divide these by 2 so we get the average value. So we'll take the sum of the two, divide it by 2, and when we look at competition.z, we see that for the first pirate, their average z-score was 0.09. Uh, let's just uh, confirm this, so if we again look at grog z, so their first value for the first person was 1.38 and for climbing it was negative 1.19. So if you add these two and divide by 2, you should get 0.09 and so on. So now if we look at these z-scores, we can try to figure out what the maximum is. So max of competition dot z and we see the maximum value is 0.51, which belongs to actually the second pirate. So the second pirate had the highest average standardized z-score across the two events, which I think means that that pirate actually was the best performer on average. What's kind of interesting about this is that in this data set, if we look back over at the original values, the second pirate wasn't the best grog drinker, because the first person was, first pirate, and they weren't the best climber, because the last one was, but they were second best in both events, and because they were the second best in both events, that's why they got this high z-score. So that's the best, uh, the best pirate. So um, yeah, that's uh, the basics of how to combine uh, vectors in R and how to do simple descriptive statistics.